Hey there everybody, Swole Beast here with another guide for new players. Today we're going to be going over the settings that I use in the game to optimize my play. I do want to preface this slightly by saying this is not a guide to get the best frame rate out of BDO. This is a guide showing what I use, going over what I what my hardware is, so that I get good enough results. There are other guides out there that will direct you to how to completely optimize. There's also paid for services such as Invicta that do an excellent job at, uh, at optimizing the performance of BDO to get the highest frame rate and the highest graphical settings possible. I've used Invicta on a previous computer. It worked great for me. I have not used it on this computer because this computer I believe is powerful enough that it does not require that. Uh, but I would highly recommend the service should you decide to go that route. So to start things off, I want to jump right into the settings for chat. For new players, this is going to be extremely important if you don't want to expose yourself to an overwhelming amount of information or a certain amount of toxic player base. <laughs> Every game has them, people that spam chat with inflammatory comments that we don't necessarily want to hear when we're trying to play a video game for fun. So the first thing I am going to recommend that you do when you log into Black Desert Online is click Escape, go to Community, and Chat Group. By default, you are placed in the Lunar Halo Inn chat group. It is advertised as a cozy shelter for new and returning adventurers. It is anything but that. It is a cesspool full of toxicity, political conversations, and people trying to test the limits of what they can and cannot say before a GM will ban them. Highly suggest you get out of this group and join any of the other groups as soon as possible. In order to do that, click on any of these other chat groups, hit enter. It'll ask for a confirmation. Group chat on your chat window will be entirely more enjoyable for you moving forward. So the next thing I'm going to cover is going to be about your chat boxes in the bottom left. Your screen will not look like mine. I'm a guild master. I like having three chat boxes, one where I can monitor guild chat and whispers, and one where I can monitor server and group chat. Uh, the second chat window, or the one on top when you default into the game, is system chat. Click on the gear icon for system chat. As a new player, this chat spams you with every achievement that every nearby player accomplishes. You don't care what fishing level a guy 200 meters away from you has received. So turn off general, leave private item on, everything else is turned off. Hit confirm. This will now only show you what you want to see. Now that we've set our system chat, we're going to move on to the other chat window. I do prefer a smaller chat font, so I do turn font size to small. Besides that, everything else here is user preference. I also prefer for my whispers and my guild chat to show timestamps so that I know when, that everything's been responded to in a timely manner. The next thing we're going to cover is a setting that's deeper in the settings menu, but we're going to cover it first because it's the most important. I cover this in my new player guide, the seasonal play. I'm going to cover it again because it is very, very valuable. You go to settings and you go to general settings alerts. Turn off all the shared settings except for notification. And I also prefer to turn off wars, guild wars and conquest wars, unless you are in a guild that participates in wars and conquest wars. I also enjoy turning off pearl items, guild member logins, and nearby monsters as you get spammed with those quite frequently. Everything else I leave on, but the important ones are the shared ones. You will be spammed by every single person on the server's enhancement if you do not turn these off. You'll never get a moment where your screen is not spamming you with something. 
Next, we'll get into a little bit of the graphical settings that I have on my system. First, I want to discuss what hardware I have so that you can gauge whether you need to set down or above where I'm set at. I have a 4070 Ti 12 gigabyte graphics card, a 13700 KF Intel i7 processor, and 32 gigs of RAM. If your computer is superior to that, feel free to set everything on. If your computer is less than that, play around with the settings. In the settings menu, it does show you what frames per second you are getting, so you're able to gauge it. I highly suggest leaving town before you play with all the settings in town with a ton of players around you and a ton of NPCs, your FPS will drop significantly. Also, do not be close to a coast. Generating waves and water uh, tanks your FPS in this game. Not to a point where it's unplayable, but when you're trying to optimize your settings for when you're going to grind in the game, I would suggest going out into the wilderness, standing in the middle of the woods in a safe spot and playing with your settings there. Okay, we're going to open the settings menu. We're going to start at the top and work our way down. So we start at performance settings. I recommend high texture quality. It does not make a significant difference in your FPS dropping it to low. High works great. It looks great. I prefer that. I play the game on remastered. There's these options up here for graphics and then high-end graphics is remastered and ultra. Remastered, as you can see, gets me above 160 FPS. My monitor maxes out at a 165 Hertz. It gets me right where I want to be. Uh, I did, when I first started playing the game on an older computer, use very high. There, you can still easily get the game to about 100 to 120 FPS. It does look a little more video gamey, a little less uh, like it's a, a video camera. I actually enjoy that look a lot. I just recently started playing on Remastered and adjusted to that. Anti-aliasing, I recommend none applied. It does tank your FPS, but more importantly for me, it tries to make everything look like it has some kind of lens flare and it's focusing. To me, it's really strange because it makes a lot of things on the screen look like they're out of focus. I don't enjoy that. I enjoy my video games to look crystal clear anywhere I try to focus my eyes. Uh, so I enjoy not applied. The other things we're going to talk about here is faraway objects and faraway NPCs. I have those turned on. This game, especially when sailing or traveling over long distances, you do use landmarks to guide yourself or islands to guide yourself when sailing. Uh, having faraway objects on helps with that. Faraway NPCs, if you have this turned off, you'll see in the, in the preview here, that NPCs that are further away will appear gray and like they're clay claymation. Uh, it's not a good look. If your PC can handle far away NPCs, turn this on. If your frame rate tanks, turn it off. You're gonna have a uh, pop in. The PC uh, NPCs won't fully appear for you until they're very close to you. Uh, it's something you're gonna have to deal with if you have a, uh, a PC that can't handle far away NPCs. We're going to go to optimization. I have upscale and auto frame optimization not applied or off. Uh, don't recommend these options. I don't see a large uh, return on investment or return on resources by having these on. So I keep those on. Low power option turned off. Every guide I've ever seen recommends having low power option turned off. So now we go to camera performance. Here you want camera vision range at a 100%. It's the game defaults, I believe, at 50. It's very zoomed in. Combat gets very hard on the eyes. Highly recommend you move this out to 100% to give you a maximum field of range. I also have camera effects turned down to about 45%. Uh, this you can adjust down further if you, you're having issues with your eyes and the camera effects. Workers and pets. I have hide all pets on. We'll get into this a little further in this in the settings. Next, we move on to display settings. I play at 1440p. 
If your monitor only handles 1080p, set it at 1080. If you play at 4K, set it to 4K. This is where you do that. I also play full screen windowed because I use two monitors. UI upscale, I leave it at 100% at 1440. I feel the UI is a perfect size. At 1080, I feel the UI is a little too big and I would turn this down. Crop mode, I've been told and I've tested it slightly. Uh, if you crop the screen to be a little bit smaller, you do go have an uptick in FPS. I personally don't enjoy the look of it very much, so I leave this turned off. Again, here is where you set remastered and high texture quality. We've already gone over this. You can see I'm getting right at my max FPS that my monitor can handle at 165. It sometimes goes a little below that. I'm okay with that. I don't need to be maxed at any, at any given moment. This does go down when I'm in towns. This does go down when I'm near shore. So I'm not getting perfect FPS, but it does stay above 60 at almost all times, and I don't notice the dip, so it does not bother me. Again, anti-aliasing is off. We already talked about faraway NPCs. I don't enjoy the look of blood in this game. Uh, it feels like a little less of a fantasy game at that point, so I have those turned off. Uh, auto frames off. Here is an important setting. Remove others' effects. Remove far away effects. I have these both turned off. You can turn on others' effects if you want to see others' effects. I would highly recommend you turn effects way down in opacity later in the settings, because if you have everybody's settings turned, every effect turned on, and you see it at 100%, you will never be able to see the effects that enemies are using to hit you with, and you will not be able to dodge them effectively. So I personally keep it turned off. When I do group content, this helps. When If uh, I were ever to get in a large-scale PvP, I believe this would help immensely. So highly recommend that. For effects, if the game is too bright and too vibrant for you, this is where that setting comes into play. It is under effects. Under effects, I have photo filter at none. Under certain camera settings in the game, this is set to vibrant. And it is not very enjoyable for me. It is way too bright. Some people enjoy it, I do not. I use recommended one of non-contrast or I set it to none. I don't see a difference between those two. So I wanted to point that out while we were here. I have gamma turned down to negative 50. This is a setting that I feel is extremely comfortable in my eyes. This game is very bright on remastered or ultra. So negative 50 gamma is necessary. If I switch my settings to very high graphics, I need to turn my gamma to about negative 15. So gamma negative 50, if you're trying to do photorealistic settings, if you're using the video game settings at very high or below, I'd recommend turning it down to about negative 15 so that it's easier on the eyes. Otherwise, the game is very bright. Again, I have other people's effects off, so I only see my own spells. I have that set at 70%. Some people do like this lower. Camera graphics. We've already changed the vision range to 100. Here's where we get into camera effects. Overall camera effects, I've already discussed at 45. Vibration blur. If you get motion sickness, turn these down the whole way. I have them set at only 20% because I do like seeing my screen vibrate when it's supposed to and shows that something is happening. But uh, it is very overwhelming when you first start playing the game and this is set to 100. So vibration and blur, I have set down. I have not messed with screenshot settings. I don't take a lot of screenshots in this game. The game is very beautiful. If that is your thing, please feel free to play around with these. Audio settings. I don't change too many of these, except that the game is extremely loud by default. It will overpower the other things that you may have running on your computer, such as Discord or something you use for voice chat. I actually play the game at 11% volume. I haven't adjusted anything else, but 11% of the volume, I get all the sound effects though. For general settings, I leave these for the most part alone. I do turn off combat assistance because I don't want to rely on it, but aim assistance I do leave on. It does help when using things like match locks and hunting. I greatly prefer it to be on. 
Uh, if you are an extremely skilled gamer, you might prefer this off. Wanted to point that out. I also use the font Strong Sword. Uh, there's not much of a difference between the two fonts. I just prefer the look of this one, and I think it's a little bit smaller. For showing and hiding, the most important setting here is adventurer name settings. Always show family names. As I've mentioned in my previous guide, family name is what most players in this game will know you as and what you will know most players as. Please have always show family names turned on. Uh, here, this is a personal preference. I leave uh, hit point, monster hit point uh, gauges on, monster names on so that it's directly above their head. Uh, and then I turned off show stacked hit point bars. If you're a PvP player, these might be more useful for you. I am not, so I don't use those. You know, um, under pets and fairy, I hide both. You do see an uptick in FPS if you hide both. Also, while your pets are kind of cool and they look neat, being able to see them offers no actual in-game benefit. They will loot everything and they will... Uh, affect all your skills exactly the same whether they're hidden or not same thing goes for the fairy and i do recommend keeping campsite settings on to see other campsites it does help when you arrive at a place that you're looking to camp for a long time you realize there's a tent up there's a there's a mount sitting next to it meaning somebody else is probably camping it uh, might want to look around for a couple minutes to see if they're what they're killing before you set up camp and pick a fight in this game you can fight each other on the open servers uh, it does cause controversy when you start camping somebody else's rotation maids and butlers i have it set to one you can turn this up in your residence i don't see a reason to they don't actually do anything other than walk around your residence sweeping the floor so i leave this at one i do recommend turning on miss effects Accuracy is a big stat in this game, especially in late game, not so much in early game. You do want to be aware of when you're attacking a mob and you are missing it. Uh, you might want to change some of your gear around to give yourselves more accuracy uh, and look up what mobs you should be fighting based off your current level of accuracy. So I would turn this on because this could be affecting how, how successful you are at killing mobs as you move through the game. Alerts, we've already gone over. Remember to turn off most of these. On world map, I leave everything by default. And region, you can pick your language here. You can also turn off the chat filter here. Notice there are four languages to pick from and six regions to pick from. The chat filter filters out all curse words for all four languages and regions. There are basic words in English that will be filtered as curse words because they are curse words in other languages. Highly recommend you turn off chat filter even if you don't plan on doing a large amount of cursing because it will help you communicate more effectively. For miscellaneous, I leave classic UI and I use guide arrows. Uh, I think the general recommended settings here are to leave land settings exact and water pathing to smooth. Other than that, I don't change too many of the settings here. Something worth talking about in interface is the setting of the WW key or evasion. Some classes, you do want to set this to a hotkey so that you can burst forward or teleport forward depending on the class. Wanted to cover that slightly here. There are gamepad settings. This game is controller compatible. I do not use it. I personally would not recommend it. Play on PC, use your mouse and keyboard. You have a lot more control over your character. And when you get into more advanced endgame, there are things called animation cancels you'll be using. You'll want to have that control at that point in the game. The last thing I want to cover is external hardware. I use a gaming mouse that has custom buttons on it. Highly recommend one of these. I use a Razer mouse. Uh, honestly, the, the brand of mouse is irrelevant, but it has buttons on the side uh, near my thumb and in the center that I find extremely useful. I do not adjust a lot of the keybinds in the game. I instead adjust the keybinds on the mouse to match the game. 
uh, they're relatively simple. One of those key binds that I use is control, the mouse button directly over my thumb. I use control on, it gives me control of my mouse in the game, very useful. The button directly above that, I use uh, as a comma, which also summons your black spirit. There's a lot of quests in this game where you have to come summon your black spirit relatively quickly to move on. Uh, rather than taking your hand off the keyboard, hitting the comma button, that's what I do. And lastly, I have M and P bound to my two middle mouse buttons. Uh, that is your map and your per, uh, personal stat sheet. I look at them a lot, uh, so I recommend having those right there and available to you. Uh, the only other hotkey that I use, and this is one personal preference for me, I have six macro buttons on my keyboard. I use a Razer keyboard for that. Uh, for streaming, I use one of those buttons, but I also use the macro button two, and I have it programmed to Garmouth.com. So anytime I need to pull up boss timers in a hurry because I wanna make sure I'm not about to miss something, or anytime I pull up the gear planner or what grind spot I wanna do, I can look up which one's gonna earn me the most money, uh, things like that. I find Garmouth.com very useful to pull up in a hurry. The last thing I wanna go over in this video is your UI. There is a lot of different settings that we can utilize in the UI to highly customize your BDO experience. I wanna show you what I use. It's not the best in the world, but it works for me. So my UI, first and foremost, custom hit point bar. I believe everybody, for the most part, uses this. It takes your hit points from the top left and puts them down in the middle of your screen. It actually puts them a little lower. I move that hit point bar up and my stamina bar so they're directly below my character's feet. And directly below that is my buff list. Here's the three chat bars I talked about before. I have chat three set to show just guild and whispers. Chat five, I have set as my server information, which shows everything that I loot along the way. And chat one is my server and group. Uh, for most players, you can combine guild, whisper, server, and group into one chat window. I just prefer it this way as a guild master. Uh, the next part we'll talk about is your cooldowns. So there is a default cooldown window where everything shows up in a order of when the cooldown was activated. This is a useful way to start playing the game or start playing a class. It's not going to work for you at end game. I promise you, you're gonna want to know certain abilities are on certain cooldowns and when they come off at that time. So what you're gonna wanna do, what I do, is I turn on show grid, I turn on um, and I pull all these cooldown slots over to the right side of my screen and I put them into a grid over here that I understand. So I do three across and then two across for the last two and my black spirit raids directly below it. You can do whatever works for you. I've seen a ton of different UI setups, but I do this way so that like for my witch, I can do my earth abilities, my lightning abilities, my heels on a, each on a different row so that I can quick reference it and look, oh look, my first two heels are on cooldown, I need to hit my third heel, things like that. So that's what I find useful. I line it up to the grid. It does not snap to the grid. It does snap to other elements in the UI. So these are all snapped to each other as best they could and as tight as I could get them. Um, then I have the quests over on the right. My mount, I moved mount bar, I moved up a little bit and party and platoon are around the same level over here my quick slots i use auto assign quick slots or auto align quick slot bar and i adjust these the quick slot bar by default is this one up here it comes with eight quick slot abilities you can fit 12 in roughly the same space if you use auto align quick slots so that works better for me as well that about covers the ui when you want to save it, you save, you hit the preset you're saving to. When you want to load a UI, you simply click the preset under UI and you can load from there. Uh, the last thing we'll talk about in the UI is when you're teaching people through Discord or video or streaming, 
Uh, you can turn on your keyboard display so people can see what buttons you're pressing as you press them. And uh, that's very useful for teaching. I will be making guides for classes in the near future. This will be turned on so that everybody can see what we're working with. That covers my UI overview. That covers my setting overview. I wanted to make a quick video to go over that. I hope this was uh, brief and to the point. I hope this helps you. If you have any other questions, if you have any requests for guides in the future, please put them down in the comments below and I'll start working on them. Let me know what you need and we'll make that happen for you. Thank you. Have a good day.